Are you an enterprise dissatisfied with overpriced analytics software that can't keep up with modern data? If so, then Gravwell is the solution for you. Gravwell is an unstructured data analytics platform for enterprises who demand total data visibility across their network. Gravwell lets your security team go beyond the SIM and fuse data sources to correlate and answer questions you didn't know needed to be asked. Go to gravwell.io forward slash security weekly for an unlimited data trial and gain uncompromising visibility today. Today's determined attackers easily bypass even the most advanced network defenses. Trying to ramp up staff to detect their back doors can cost thousands of dollars and take months, even years. With Active Countermeasures AI Hunter, we enable junior analysts to detect even the most advanced back doors in a matter of hours. Sign up for a demo and purchase our product today by visiting activecountermeasures.com forward slash ESW. Active Countermeasures, make every analyst a hunter. In 2017, an increasing number of companies reported they did not have effective insider threat detection methods. Logarithm's UEBA solutions enable you to detect and neutralize user-based threats in real time, while built-in scenario and behavior-based analytics empower you to expose insider threats, compromised accounts, and privilege misuse. Visit Logarithm.com to learn how their UEBA solutions can help you expand visibility and enhance detection capabilities. We are here at DEF CON recapping Black Hat, which I know sounds kind of strange, but while it was fresh in our heads, we wanted Matt and I, Matt Alderman is here, I'm of course Paul Asadorian, we wanted to recap some of the things that we've been uh, observing in all of our briefings and activities at Black Hat, um, in addition to a lot of the conversations we've had today at DEF CON, yeah, right. which is kind of interesting. I think people have this perception of DEF CON as being, well, it's a hacker conference, it's just for the practitioners, there's not a lot of enterprise people. I, I don't know, today, Matt, I I've talked with people from some of the largest companies in the U.S. Yeah. that work for those companies that are not only fans of the show, but sharing their thoughts and opinions on the security space today. This has just been an awesome day. Yeah, I, it, I was amazed how many enterprise folks Because you haven't here. been to DEF Right, I've never right? been. This is DEF CON 26. It's my yeah. first one. But I always had the same perception, too, is this is the hacker community. They may be affiliated with the company. They may not. You don't, you don't really know, right? They, right? But th pe these people are coming in. They're working for enterprises. They have these problems, and they're like, we love what you're doing with this show or that show because they want to learn yeah. this new stuff. And it, it's been great. You know, we've had to take great a break. validation. Yeah. yeah, and we've had to take breaks in these sessions because people are lining up waiting to see you, the <laughs> celebrity. And uh, so we got to make sure well, we, get, we get the fans yeah. in here. It's great to talk yeah. to the listeners. Um, it's a, a great honor for me to, to hear how much they get out of our shows. Uh, it was really cool. One of the listeners came in and said, you know, I've been listening since episode one and was talking about all the things. And I handed him a challenge coin. So we have a limited edition 100 challenge coins that were printed. And like select listeners and, and people that have supported us. I'm like, dude, you've been listening since episode one. I'm like, here's a challenge yeah. coin. Like, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And plus the... Uh, Plus your buddy from Brown, who who you yeah, kinda, uh, Duck Sauce. Yeah, uh, we lovingly refer to him as uh, uh, who I worked with at Brown. Uh, stopped by, and he was one of the original inspirations for the show. He's basically Paul. You need to do a podcast, and so he jokes. He's like, "It's my fault." Yeah. I said, <laughs> so, "Some people would say, good job." He's right. like, you know, it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. We're going to talk about ICS. Uh, security and some of the ICS, uh, industrial control systems, yes. uh, which is a space that I've dabbled in quite a bit. Um, you know, writing the book in 2007 about Linksys routers was really my first exposure to a lot of how embedded devices worked. And when I started looking at ICS security, I was like, wow, this is like the same thing. And we see the similar problems, just that uh, the stakes are higher. Yes. When it comes to ICS. Yeah. At a consumer level, they're going to go out and just buy a new router. Well, that's, yeah, if it gets okay. hacked, dude, like just Who go cares? buy a new router. You know, no one's uh, water supply or electricity is being cut off. Or in that. oil gas. It's their or, internet yeah. connection, which is a minor inconvenience. Right. And they buy a new router, they're back up and running. But in ICS. It's a completely different ballgame. And the nation state level attacks, from what I've been hearing, are on the rise. We've seen recent uh, advisories from various federal government agencies that are saying nation states are attacking our critical infrastructure and industrial control systems. Yeah. And I think that's put it at center stage for the security of these systems. Yeah, and we're seeing more traction here. You know, you and I got a little exposure to this at Tenable. Yeah. 
Uh, well, the, the passive the passive, passive sensor, vulnerability scanner. Right. The passive has a play. Yeah, the passive vulnerability sensor had some very unique capabilities. They don't call it that anymore, though. No, they changed the name. I, I the O the OT scanner or whatever they call it now. I, I don't even know if they officially named it. Um, but they, you, when we were there, we knew we had something with the passive sensor and the ability to sit on these networks mm -hmm. and monitor the traffic, looking for vulnerabilities, and so we could do things like asset discovery, vuln detection. The market's evolved since then. Mm -hmm. uh, Tenable's still playing in the space with their partnership announcement. Well, I mean, they have a patent on vulnerability yeah. detection through they passive do. analysis exactly. on the network, so. Yeah, and, and very strong patents, actually, yeah. on their yeah. passive sensor, which is... Uh, an which is why we don't see that technology at any right. other vendor. Right, exactly. <laughs> but now what you're seeing evolve is you're seeing a you're seeing one other um, vulnerability vendor, Tripwire, who I mm -hmm. briefed um, during Black Hat the last couple of days, um, moving into that space after they were acquired by Belden. And you're seeing... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So Tripwire I'm, I'm going to educate yeah. you today. That's sure. why we're doing this. I hadn't caught up with Tripwire. I'm glad you did. Right. Yeah. I did because I, I really wanted to understand what was going on. And then you have very specific ICS-focused vendors. And I got to brief with two of them yep. at Black Hat. And so Rob Lee and Dragos is uh, really the market leader. Yeah. And it, there, there's there's differences between them, so I wanted sure. to use this segment a little bit to kind of educate on that and kind of break down w what I saw from those sure. three vendors. You know, so Tenable with the Pasta sensor, the Siemens relationship has some OT capabilities. Tripwire, though, also has capabilities here. One of the things that um, they did when Belden bought them was really to figure out how to leverage aspects of the Tripwire portfolio into the industrial control side. Mm -hmm. And so they have more Belden, focus. Belden makes the products that are in use in the OT space in the ICS, Correct, right? yeah. Okay. They have a couple different brands under them. Mm -hmm. If I go through my notes, I'm sure I will mm. find them, but uh, Tofino and Hirschman are products that are in the mm -hmm. Belden portfolio that are on the industrial Basically control side. Basically PLCs and things of yeah, that nature. Okay. Yeah, those types of systems, right? And so Tripwire's really been expanding their capabilities over onto that side of the ICS market. So it was interesting to talk to them because mm -hmm. You know, we think of Tripwire, you know, Tripwire has a vulnerability management play with the Encircle acquisition. They're still probably the de facto leader in FIM, file integrity monitoring. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what No one's really of, right? ripped and replaced them out because of their capabilities from day one have not really been matched. Uh, but now they have this whole focus on the OT side. So it's interesting to see how they've kind of mm. morphed under the Belden acquisition, which I thought was interesting. So I wanted to see that. But really the core players here, there's like four of them. And I got to talk to two of them uh, into, into some good depth. But you've got Dragos, mm -hmm. you have Clarity, Security Matters, and Nozomi Networks are probably the four sure. really focused. I also industrial like Waterfall systems. Security in the ICS space as well. Yeah, they're a Lior is an awesome, yeah. awesome person, and I think doing some really great things in that space. Le Lior is doing something interesting where he's trying to bridge between the IT and the OT networks yep. with his um, awesome I guess, technology. OT firewall, yeah. right? If our listeners are interested in that, and you're interested in the ICS, Please let us know, because um, uh, I kind of want to gauge how interested our audience is in this subject. But yeah. we did a great interview with Lior about that technology and dug into exactly how his firewall works. Right. Oh, my God, is that so cool. Yeah. So cool. And so these guys would sit on the OT segment. Mm -hmm. uh, he would buffer the IT and the OT segment. So they're very complementary. Uh, but these four vendors are really focused on the OT networks themselves, three of them are more focused on what I would call cyber resiliency. Mm -hmm. And these are Clarity, Security Matters, Nozomi, where they're really working on identifying what assets are on the network and then inspecting the protocols and looking for anomalies in that traffic. Which is a, a, a task you can actually accomplish because typically there's not that large of an environment to inventory and right. identify protocols. But the challenge here is the breadth of protocols in that environment. Yes. And so where the real secret sauce is on those vendor side, and even what Tripwire and Tenable will have to do, is support more of those protocols mm -hmm. because they're very unique. There's a lot of them based on what instrumentation you have. They're highly specialized protocols, and you have to understand and, some and decode of them are all that. Like have no like Modbus has no security whatsoever. Right. Yeah. And so that's part of what all these guys have to do in some form or fashion. But I think we've seen a progression in the ICS space where Modbus has been replaced by DNP3 
and they migrated away from largely migrated away from Mars. I mean, and there's but sure there's still, still there. people you're still there. <laughs> it's still there. But there's been a, a I think if you look over the past ten years, a huge migration. Uh, away yes. From that. And so those so, so what I call cyber resiliency vendors really are focusing on what assets are on the network. Let me start to baseline the traffic, and and their their detections are based off anomalous uh, traffic um, in those protocols. That's what's doing the alerting. Most of them are really focused on the preventive side, looking for alerts and then notifying somebody, but not really taking action. Dragos actually is on the other side of that equation. They're more on the cyber defense side for ICS. And what Rob Lee over at Dragos has built, and I got to sit down with Sergio, who runs their threat intelligence team, is they're actually trying to understand the tools, techniques, and processes that are being used to attack these systems and building out threat intelligence around them and then b leveraging their platform to identify those attacks, not as anomalies, but as true attacks, and then have incident response capabilities in the portfolio to help companies respond Respond because these systems are unique. We're not going to go grab a security orchestration automation tool and write some playbooks and just kind of automate changes to a PLC or some of these devices, right? It just you can't do it that way. Mm -hmm. And so what Rob's built uh, on his team in Dragos is a really specialized group of people, practitioners that understand industrial control systems, and not only from a threat side, but also how do you respond to these attacks? How do you protect these systems? They have the expertise. And so, yeah, they do the, the asset identification, some of the other things that the cyber resiliency guys do, but they're, they're really trying to help people respond to that market. And that's kind of where I see the, the different players. So I did sit down with uh, Dave Weinstein, VP of Threat Research at Clarity, um, I also spoke with uh, Sergio um, uh, Celt Celtgrone over at Dragos mm -hmm. on the threat intel side, so kind of similar interviews. And uh, it was just interesting to talk to them because it is this new evolving space. Everybody sure. starts to understand that these systems um, can be attacked. Um, the technology used to protect them is different than what we're doing in the IT world. Um, Clarity will talk about you know how to how to bridge the gap between IT and OT. It's a similar Ooh. message to Tenable and Tripwire. I think Clarity's got a lot more protocol detection capabilities right now mm -hmm. um, to be, be broader. But where Dragos really differentiates themselves is, look, we see the threats, we know, understand the threats, and we know how to respond to the threats. So if you're in the industrial control world and you're looking for expertise, you know, I think some of these core guys are going to be the ones that you're looking so at. So, in your assessment, Dragos understands the attacks better than anyone else. Yeah, yeah, by far. He's made the investment in the threat intelligence team, the resources, and even on the incident response side to really respond to these attacks. I think that's where their true differentiation is, is that pure mm -hmm. depth of knowledge in the industrial control side that, that gives them an advantage. If you're looking to, per, you know, do the full spectrum of prevent, identify, detect, and respond. Dragos is there. If you're looking to get your arms around it, uh, but you don't want a solution to necessarily respond, then some of these other guys work, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to work fine for you. Um, but it's that response piece and that, yeah. that just pure uh, industrial knowledge that sits within the Dragos team, I mm -hmm. think, is very unique. Matt, in your assessment, where do we stand in bridging the gap between IT and OT? Um, we're nowhere close. Interesting. Uh, I don't. I don't see it yet because it's interesting, it's right? It's been a struggle for some time. It is, but here, I think this is the thing people have to understand: securing IT, it's under the security budget. Mm -hmm. Securing OT, it's not necessarily under the security budget. It's with the plant manager. Yeah. It's a completely different buyer, right? These guys have been run. Their their job is to run the plant. Downtime in those plants costs money, mm -hmm. and so bringing solutions in. Yeah, well, and let's be frank, it could cost more than money. It could, yeah. Safety is a big play mm -hmm. in industrial control. Uh, I used to work in nuclear power. I spent about six months in oil and gas um, at the BP refinery down in New Orleans. Byproducts of producing petroleum is is uh, sulfur dioxide or sulfur, yeah, SO4. Mm -hmm. It's deadly, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, it can kill people. Right. It's, it's not just the uh, uh, consumers of power or right. uh, water, right, in, in infecting the population, but the workers at the plant, the workers too. So at the plants themselves, the board. there's safety yeah. across the board, both on the consumer side, but also on the worker side. So safety is a big concern there. And the plant managers own those budgets. So 
IT vendors, I think, are going to struggle a little bit in convincing the plant managers to deploy technologies on those networks mm -hmm. without understanding that environment. That's why I think these ICS vendors are in a little better position because yes, they understand the OT problems a little better than the IT guys do. And so I think they're going to be a little more effective selling into some of these markets better. I've experienced that as well. When you talk to anyone who is a plant manager in industrial control systems, if you have not worked directly with those systems, they pretty much don't want to talk to you. They don't. And, but, and I, I get it now, right? Because of the, the huge safety concerns and just operational concerns. Like operations is a, a big deal when you're running something like a nuclear power plant. Right. So you can't come along and be like, yeah, like I've done some general security stuff. I think you have to be specialized in this industry and that's to be why effective. I, and that's why I don't think we're we're bridged there yet. Yeah, no, we're I, talking you know, I very two different buyer personas, two very different budgets, two different ways to approach security, different expertise. And so it's a great marketing message to say we're unifying IT and OT. I think it's actually a lot harder than that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what's important is getting your arms around the ICS side of the house, may, doing the right things to protect that critical infrastructure. Then there can be conversations about how do you unify that in with your IT systems and how do you bring some of that data into the SOC. Even if you brought the alerts into the SOC, the SOC's not going to know what to do with it. Right. They have no idea what that means. Yeah, because the alerts are different. The alerts are completely different mm -hmm. on different systems that, the, that security analysts aren't necessarily used to seeing. So even if I took all this great data and threw it into the SOC, what's the SOC going to do with it? They're going to call yeah. up the plant guys to figure out what right. to do, right? That's why I don't think we're bridged yet in, in this environment. And I think there's still there's going to be there, work to are do. Are there this. lessons we can learn from bridging uh, what I think that we've done a really good job of bridging with developers today, with DevOps? I think that we've made some huge strides there. We have. Can we apply some of those same models to, uh, to ICS? Maybe. I think, I think um, we have to be open to learning the challenges of the industrial control system, Excuse me, yeah. what the plant mm -hmm. managers really need and want, and listen to them, and then come up with solutions that work for them. And then how does that come together with the rest of the security program? But if you think you're going to walk in with a traditional security solution and say, look, plant manager, buy this, and I'm going to, it's not going to work that way because those systems really aren't meant to deal with that environment. So I think just like we did with DevOps, right? We need to sit down with the developers. We need to sit down with the operations team. We need to sit down with the software architecture teams and go, guys, where, where are you in your roadmaps? What, what technologies are you using? What kinds of solutions mm -hmm. should we think about building into the process? That's how we solve this problem to date, um, somewhat effectively. I mean, we still have strides to make there sure. as well. But if we're talking to that team and really understanding what they want, and then building solutions that fit. That's why I think you see very specialized container security products and other things that snap into that. I think the same thing could happen on the OT side, but we've got to be willing to cross over to that side, talk to them, learn from them, understand what they want, and then figure out how some of these specialized systems that they need then integrate back into the security program. So it starts with dialogue. It starts with the IT folks talking to the plant folks. Yeah, it's a huge communication issue, very similar to the one we had when we had the talk to developers. I have to talk to developers right. and operations folks on the development side. Yeah, sure. exactly right. Um, and you realize that safety is a concern, mm. the utmost concern, right? Safety of the byproduct that goes out the door, but safety of the workers, that's the driver. So how do you help them safely run those plants? If you can help them with the safety equation, right. now you can frank, start to make, make some inroads. Security of these devices speaks greatly to safety. Yes. And if you look at a classic attack like Stuxnet, I mean, centrifuges exploding is a huge, not just a, a problem in and of itself, but a huge safety issue as well. Yes, agreed. Um, and you know, tampering with our water systems, tampering with our electrical grid, mm -hmm. you know, we're used to having the ability to flip a switch and lights come on. What happens when you flip a switch and that light doesn't come on mm -hmm. anymore? What does that do to the way we're used to operating as humans, right? right. It, it, it's a very different impact than my data getting stolen. Mm -hmm. um, 
not that it's not important, but it, it's different. It's at a different level for the industrial control folks. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in oil and gas when I was at RSA working with one of mm -hmm. the big oil companies. These are concerns they have. They have to protect upstream, downstream, midstream, the refining, all those processes in between because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in those, in those plants, those environments, and as you're transporting stuff that have grave security concerns or safety concerns, uh, let alone from a from a security perspective. And so, yes, it is a it's much more of a safety correlation back into security there. I think that's a great roundup of ICS. And so, what were the vendors again that people uh, should consider that, that we've done some? Yeah, kind with? of the core ones you're going to see out there again: Dragos, mm -hmm. uh, Clarity, Security Matters, and Nozomi, kind of the specialized guys. Tripwire and Tenable doing some stuff yep, with the yep. relationships with Belden on the Tripwire side, Siemens on the Tenable side. Um, I would expect those guys to have to continue to add more protocol support to continue to do more of what I would call the traditional cyber resiliency. If you're looking for or true, how do I defend against attacks? How do I respond to those? Dragos is really the leader in that space right now. Awesome. Thanks so much, Matt. You're welcome. That concludes this segment. Thank you for watching this interview from Las Vegas. If you want to watch and learn more, go to securityweekly.com forward slash summer camp 18 or go to our YouTube channel, Security Weekly, to view the playlist.